Hello again, it's me, Melton, little Melto channel. Today, we're going to actually put some hammer fittings in. Raw plug, that is the name of them. These are hammer fittings, and they must admit, they do cause a little bit of controversy on what's the best way to actually put them in. There are quite a few different ways to put them in, but today, hopefully, I'll show you exactly how we do it, the correct way. So, how do we start then? We start off, first of all, by countersinking. I'll do two at once. What you're supposed to do is, you stagger the actual holes when you're putting buttons on a wall. Imagine this piece of wood here, and I'll just turn the camera around a little bit, but no, I'll leave it where it is just now. You probably can see the button anyway. You're supposed to stagger them like this, one there and one there. Of course, a bit further apart, because when you're putting these on as wall buttons, like for say a gate post, you're supposed to do that, otherwise it can actually move in the middle and it can actually sway from side to side. So that's why you actually do it like the way I'm going to show you how we do it today. So I will move the camera now. Right, first job, quick countersink. I'll explain why later. Remember, you stagger it, but you'd be further apart, of course. I'm only, doing, I'm only doing this because it's easier to do it this way. Then we drill our 8mm hole in the wood. Like so. Now that that's done, we then take our SDS or percussion drill. And I know my bit's sticking through a bit, but don't forget, I'm going, I'm going through the wood first. Okay. Right then. Got mm, quite a lot of that dust. Then, we take our hammer fittings these here and we push them into place and that's exactly how they should go in they should just push straight in like so you shouldn't have to hit them and belt them and bang them and put them into place right they're in place now so the next job because they're called hammer fittings and well, I'll just bring you for a bit closer and look at this now if you look very carefully there you can see where I countersunk it it's actually went down there and it's where actually quite flush with it you see that? That's why I countersunk it. Now that was just a quick countersink, right? So I'll show you what you do next. Now, with our hammer, we gently tap. It's about there. Then we take our screwdriver, which has a metal cap on the end of it. Can you see that? Right? And then what we do is, we then hit it like this. Right. The reason for that is, if we go bang, 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 we can damage our wood round there. We could be doing a job here for somebody else. And they might be wanting the gate post to look rather neat and tidy. You see? So we don't do that. So, what about this one? Okay, I'll show you. Might not have a top setting right, so we'll just go for it. A bit higher, maybe 10. There we are. Yeah, I screwed that one in. Now, believe this or not, the first one I put in is the first one I've ever actually hammered into place. I never hammer them in, I always screw them in. If you read online, it actually does state that you can't actually screw these in, and I prefer screwing them in. But the problem here is, we might not want these setting up as proud as what they are. You see, you might want them down a bit. So okay then, what we do is, back to the countersinking, and I'll still zigzag it, of course. Right. Go in a bit deeper. Mm -hmm. Then we were eight mil bit, draw again, right? 
Oh, there's got some sawdust in my shoe. Yeah. The sandal of shoes. See? Right then. Do I can do trusty again, yes, yes. I'd like to see how much uh, I get out of that one. Okay then, we take this, we push it in like so, we then take our trusty screwdriver and now come and have a look and see what we've done. Okay then, we'll just pause this again. Now, as you can see, this went in a bit deeper. Now if you wanted, you could actually put wood filler over this and actually hide it completely and utterly gone right so that's an over countersink that went in place these are just a little countersink and that is uh, a deep countersink shallow countersink that's what you call it that's shallow and that's deep right you could say but what harm happens if you haven't actually got a countersink bit to actually do that if you've got a flat wood bit between 12 and 13 mil I would say marks 14 on that one what you do is you take your flat bit which this is 13 okay stagger in as we go down imagine it's a big long gate post but it'd be of course up this way not lying flat like this just I couldn't do it this way up and down well maybe I could have I suppose but what way we're not doing it that way we're doing it my way so we take this again stagger in again Should about do it, deep enough. Back to the 8mm bit. SDS. Bring it a bit closer to see this. Yeah, in. So I overdid that one as you can see and it's went in quite deep. But just getting used to it. Second one I probably get it right. Oh. we are flushing right one of the other things I get asked why do we drill it out at 8 mil with an 8 mil bit the reason why you drill it out at 8 mil is if you go in with the SDS drill and you hit a knot you can damage the wood by doing this not only that the actual wall plugs themselves used to be 8 mil in diameter Wait till that bike stops. I'll restart that again. These used to be 8mm in diameter, they're not. They're actually 7.5 now, I think they are actually about that. The only bit that's 8mm is the top bit up there. This bit here. That's the only bit really that's 8mm. It's because people used to have problems with them when they actually did that with the SDS drills go straight in. I never go in there with an, eight, an SDS drill. I only do that if it's not on show, but with these I always drill at 8 because they should always just go straight in, no problem at all. Now there's another way and I'll show you that way as well, which can be done. Okay then, back to countersinking again, we'll go here this time, a bit nearer the knot. Now, 
If say you thought you might have a bit of a problem and it's not going in right, what you can do is you can unscrew them and we'll also have a quick look. As you can see there's a screw thread in there but it's shaped, it's sharp there and as it goes down it actually angles down a bit, you see. So anyway, what you can do is, and remember you shouldn't really have to do this, you can push it in like so, like this. If it wasn't going in right, you could get your hammer and tap it, but mine's went in right anyway so it didn't really matter. And of course same thing again, Just push that in there, get your old trusty drill driver, combi drill, screwdriver in my case, and again, and there we go, in place. Still not quite far enough in yet, it takes a few goes to get that one right, to get it to go actually just flush. Still that's pretty good, you see. So anyway, I've showed you some different techniques now for actually putting hammer fittings in place. And of course, as you've seen, I only used the hammer fitting on one. The rest, I just actually screwdrived in. That was the one I first hammered in, and then used the screwdriver on this one. No actual difference between it. But it's recommendable, if you're going to use hammer fittings, to stop damaging the surface of the wood. You use one of these. And you have a countersink, and you drill them out at 8mm. If you haven't got a countersink, as you can clearly see here, a 13mm or a 12mm or maybe even a push out of 14mm will do it and of course they will all quite easily screw out which I will show you now ok then let's screw them out time to set up a little bit for this right I should we do it right this was the first one I put in with the hammer fitting come on there you go that one, this one, okay there you go, the last one I did, Oops, there we go, take out, this one here, there we go, all came out, no problem at all. So, let's wait a second. So, there you have it people. The professional way how we fit hammer fittings. You could say, well why do they call them hammer fittings then if you put them in with a screwdriver? You can put them in with a hammer if you want, but it's actually easier if you use a screwdriver, combi drill, drill driver, something along them lines to put them in place. Hammer fittings, to hammer them in, yes, but I've seen that much trouble, that much damage to wood, I've even seen split wood through this. And you must remember, I have showed you staggered formation as you're coming down your gate post. And you'll have no problems with that, they will grip. The average for a gate post is usually about 6 anyway. Some people put 8 in, depending on the weight of the gate right enough. But I've showed you here just how easy it actually is to put these in place. And all as they are at the end of the day, whether we like it or not, is a giant sized wall plug with a screw in it. That's what they are. And that's why I screw them into place. Because it's easier, I think it's faster, and it causes a lot less damage. So remember, all you need is a countersink bit or something to countersink with, right? You could just use a bigger drill bit right enough. I used a flat bit. And an 8mm bit, and you'll have no problems fitting them into place like I did here. Because if you go through there, we your SDS drill like that would, they sometimes stick inside, but I must admit they have made them a bit smaller nowadays so that they might just fit. I'm not going to try it because I can't be bothered to do it the cowboy way. If you weren't going to see it, I might do it, but with hammer fittings, no, I won't do it that way. Anyway, I'm Milton, channel Scott Little Milto. Thank you very much for watching. Thumbs up, thumbs down, subscribe to the channel if you want, and have some fun in whatever you're doing. Take your time and do a nice, neat, tidy job on these. Okay then, bye now. We want to work.